Hey everyone. So over the last week or so, I've gotten a lot of emails and a lot of questions, uh, and I got one that was really good that I want to kind of do, do a tutorial with. Uh, came from Pixel Forge who said, "Hey, your plugin looks amazing. Uh, any chance you could show a video of it being used in Shooter? Will an ability be applied for each projectile or ray cast? You know, how would that work? Isn't there some overhead?" Uh, and he was kind of concerned about performance with regard to like you know firing. You know, especially with a automatic weapon, you know, are you going to fire an ability for every single bullet? So, I also got questions saying, you know, hey, what is able? And that's always something I've had difficulty describing, just because I'm a programmer and not a uh, marketer. So, like, my normal answer to non to someone who like isn't very technical is like, well, it does stuff and things on a visual timeline, but stuff and things isn't a great marketing pitch. So, uh, I thought I'd take you know, this opportunity to kind of show you that uh, and to kind of show people who are kind of new to game development what it does. So this is Shooter Game, right? This is the, this is a blueprint project. Uh, no C++. Uh, I'm running the editor through Visual Studio just because I've been kind of, you know, keeping tracks and watching for any bugs uh, in Able or anything like that. Uh, and I haven't found many, thankfully. Uh, but so this is just a normal blueprint program or blueprint uh, project. You can see I added a couple dummies uh, that I use in able showcase levels. These dummies just have health, and when they you know get to zero, they kind of blow apart, which is fun. Uh, so you can see there's these three, and then their boss guy over here. So these guys have ten health each, I think, and this guy has fifty. So uh, let me open up the first person character blueprint. So if you're if you've done anything in shooter game, you can kind of recognize this because this is basically the first thing people see. And what this is is saying, "Hey, when I press the fire action, which is bound to like left click uh, or you know some other button press, I want to grab the first person camera. I want to." Uh, grab my meshes animation instance. I want to play a montage, a specific montage, on this animation instance. I then want to make a transform. I want to spawn a projectile at that point. I want to play a sound, uh, and I want to play a sound at this location. And then there's also some stuff for the VR support. So this is a very hard-coded statement, right? Like, I want to get this position. I want to play this specific animation and I want to spawn this specific projectile and play this specific sound when this happens. So if I wanted to change any of this, but I wanted to keep this behavior, I'd have to split this off into a whole other thing, right? This is the same code in Able, where we have this variable that is just an Able class ID. We get our object, we create a context, which is just saying, hey, I want to run this ability it kind of gets a snapshot of everything it needs and then it activates that ability. So we've replaced all this very specific code with this more kind of robust data-driven code. And when I say ABLE is a data-driven system, that's what I mean. This code doesn't change. The only thing I'm going to change is my ability. So I, even right here, I've set up kind of a uh, weapon switching scheme, right? Where if I press one, I set my gun to one gun, and by set my gun, I mean I'm just setting this ability named gun to another ability, and if I press two, I set it to another one, which I'm going to show you in just a second. So let's go ahead, and we'll bring up Shooter Game. So I'm going to, let me cancel that. We'll see it in multiplayer in just a second. Let me just do single player for now. Uh, so here is Shooter Game. And remember, Pixel Forge wanted a machine gun. So, I made one, right? Like, here's our machine gun. You can see I shot the ground, and if I hit, kind of hover over these guys, they take a little bit of damage and they fall over. So I think my value is set to three. So every hit is worth three. So it takes a little bit to burn this guy down. And you can see, like, I'm not, I didn't change any code, really. Like, I just said, hey, Abel, play this ability. Now I'm going to switch my gun, and now I've got my rocket launcher, right? And this is all without recompiling anything. I'm not, you know, I didn't make any special blueprint code uh, besides, like, you know, just what I had to set up in the ability. And these rockets do 25 damage. 
So you can see they, they knock out these guys who have 10 health real easy, and this guy takes two. It also has a different behavior, right? Like it's not, I'm holding down the button, but I'm not firing again, because it's not automatic. Whereas if I change my ability and I hold down the button, it is automatic. And I don't have any special code, that's all handled with Able. So let's go ahead, and I'm, we're gonna make the machine gun ability real quick. So, let me find my abilities folder. So I'm gonna make a new Able ability. I'm gonna inherit from my just basic Able ability class because I don't wanna inherit anything from these guys. I could if I wanted to, if I wanted to set up some like shared behavior between guns, I could make a base class and then inherit from that to kind of save myself some time. But for this, I'm just gonna use just the base class. Uh, we're gonna name it uh, Machine Gun Demo. Sure. And I'm gonna open it up. And so this is the Able editor. So if you haven't seen Able before, this is the editor. You can see I've set my preview guide to kind of our mesh in uh, the first person shooter game, shooter game, so I can preview things and see how it looks roughly on this. Uh, this is my timeline where I'm gonna lay out all my tasks. These are my ability properties, which is gonna let me do my, uh, my behavior, like the automatic fire and stuff. And these are my properties over here, which I don't have anything for, but. So let's go ahead. So if you noticed, so let's, well, first things first, I wanna play an animation, right? Like that's pretty simple. Uh, I want to play, they have a first person montage. I'm just gonna use that. I have my timeline button, or I have this option check that says resize ability timeline. And what this does is it's gonna resize my ability length, basically how long my ability takes to the animation length. So that way there's no dead space at the end or anything like that, because I don't want any. Uh, I'm actually going to mark this one as a dynamic montage. Single node would stop any other um, animation that is happening, and I kind of want it just to play as a dynamic montage. So it kind of preserves that. Uh, I don't want any blending, because it's, it's, when you fire, you want it to look like it's fired immediately. So in my other, so in machine, machine gun, I did three ray casts. So we're gonna add three ray casts real quick. So I'm gonna go collision, ray cast query, and collision, ray cast query and three, collision, great cast query. Now, Pixel Forge was worried about performance. And he's right in that raycasts are expensive, right? Especially long raycasts like we're gonna have. Because if you're in a short raycast, you can kind of filter it, you know, depending on your oct tree, right? Like you can filter things down and not have to ch search so many objects. But in a longer raycast query, you need to check, you know, a lot of different, uh, you need to check over a greater space, which means checking a greater amount of objects. So the way we're gonna get around this is we're actually going to set our first request, a raycast query to client and server, and our other two, we're just gonna make those client so that our server is only gonna do one raycast at the very beginning, which is really, you know, when it matters, and calculate damage for that and then our clients are going to be playing extra raycast just to kind of give it more of that visual, you know, flair to make it look more like a machine gun. Because our client, you know, our, on a client, performance is fairly cheap, right? On a server, performance matters incredibly because that determines how many players I can have on a, on a single, you know, piece of hardware. And that determines then how much hardware I need, which, you know, translates into dollars, right? So... I have my one raycast query that's going to do client and server. I'm going to set it to 100 meters. I'm going to set my location of this query to the camera, which this is something I, I ended up adding today, actually. I'm going to go in and ask a free update because it's something that, you know, uh, shooter game needed and first person shooters need is to get the camera, which isn't something like uh, third person needs. So that'll go out as a free update. Uh, that was the one change I had to do. Everything else worked, you know, right out of the box, which I was pretty happy with. So, and these guys, I'm gonna set them up to, they're gonna be client only. Again, we're gonna mirror kind of what we had set up. A thousand, I need to add an offset about a, about a meter away from the camera. Because if your raycast is within your collision sphere, you're immediately blocking it. So, if you ever see, if you ever have a raycast query and you see it and you're like, well, why isn't it hitting anything? Check and make sure that you're, you're not hitting yourself because the player is a blocking object. So you could just be immediately blocking yourself. 
So that's been me a couple of times, and I'm, you know, I'm going to try and add better logging for that when that happens. Uh, but it's just something to look out for. So one meter uh, camera. We're gonna space them out like that. That's fine. So there's a little bit of a cooldown in the animation. So you can see if I save it, if I play it, let me turn on my collision queries. You can see, hey, look. Now I could drop it down a little bit, but uh, for this purpose, it's fine. Now I'm going to do my damage. I'm just going to add a damage effect. I'm gonna say do three units of damage. So let's say like each bullet is one point of damage, right? So I'm doing three of these, so I'm gonna tell the server, hey, the server is the only one that's actually going to be doing this. We don't want our client actually telling us how much to hit for because that's subject to tampering, right? So our server, we're gonna say, hey server, I'm gonna hit, you know, hit this guy for three where our client's gonna say, okay, and then play three recasts. Now, and I'm gonna set myself to target actors. Basically, I wanna do the, I want to damage the targets of this ability. Now there's two ways to get those targets. I can set up targeting, which does a query before any of this executes. But I don't want to do that because I kind of want this staggered over the animation. Uh, I want it kind of more determined as the animation plays. So instead, in my raycast query, I'm going to say, hey, copy your results. Basically, copy what you hit into our context, and it'll automatically bring it into the damage actors. So that'll bring that in at runtime. Now the last thing we have to do before we're done is you notice our apply damage and our raycast query happening at the exact same time. Well, we don't want that, right? We need our raycast query to finish its query, which could take a frame or so, right? Especially if, if you run async, it will take a frame, uh, just because that's how the performance works out. Uh, and we need our damage to basically happen directly after this is finished. Well, I could you know, slide this guy out and move him out and try and guesstimate when this thing will finish, but you know, there could be a bad hitch or something like that uh, you know, due to the action on the screen or some other system somewhere. So what I'm actually going to do is say, hey, apply damage. Do you have a dependency on this first rate cast query? And it's gonna add a little chain. And this chain means that this apply damage cannot execute until this raycast query is done. So as soon as this raycast query is done, meaning it's finished everything, it's copied everything into the uh, context, apply damage will execute. So, and you can see if I click on anything else, they don't have any chains because they don't have any dependencies, but apply, apply damage does. And so that's that. Uh, now let's go ahead and Let's show this in game real quick and then we'll set up the uh, automatic behavior. So let's minimize this. Now again, remember I said Able is a data-driven system. So I'm gonna select my guy here. I'm gonna set uh, his gun ability, which remember is just a variable. I'm gonna set it to gun, our new gun demo. I'm gonna play and you can see we get this kind of uh, semi-automatic behavior because we haven't set up our automatic thing. We, we don't get our effects because that's something I added in the other thing uh, which I'll show you uh, or in the other ability which I'll show you in just a moment. But you can see it takes four hits because we do three damage right and these guys have 10 health so we have to do a total of 12 damage to actually hit him. And this guy is going to take a while right like this is you see he takes a while to burn down. So let's go ahead and make this automatic. So we'll bring back up our ability. Now we're gonna set our ability to looping because we want to loop, right? We want automatic. But we want automatic as long as the button's held. So our input. So we're gonna make it channeled. We're going to add an array or add a channel condition, which all channeled says is like every frame, I'm going to check your condition. And if your condition isn't true, I'm going to return this result here which could be that it was interrupted, it was branched to another ability, or it was successful. We want successful just because the ability was fine, uh, the user just didn't want to do it anymore. So we're gonna set our condition, which could be a custom condition we fill out on a blueprint, an input condition, which is what we're gonna use, or a velocity condition, basically the speed of the player, right? 
uh, we're going to set our input to uh, fire. So what this is going to do is it's going to every frame check and make sure the fire input, which is mapped to some keys like our mouse button uh, or controller buttons, check if that's down and if not it's going to basically stop the ability. And as long as that button's held, the ability will continue playing. It'll continue looping, except for infinite loops. So we'll just keep looping over and over. And we actually, when, we, when I say we're looping, we're not actually sending the client the ability and saying, hey, play an ability, play an ability, play an ability, every time a loop happens. The clients and the server are maintaining the logic themselves and saying, oh, okay, uh, the condition is still going, it's fine, keep going, keep going, keep going. So there's you only play, pay the overhead of sending the ability down or sending the network traffic down the first time. And as long as the player doesn't remove their input, you're not paying for anything else. The server and client will just run in tandem uh, just fine. So let's go ahead. We'll go back into our ability. Remember, we haven't compiled anything. We just changed our ability and saved it. And now, look at that. We have a automatic gun. I'm not sure why that guy keeps falling, but whatever. You can see this guy kind of burns down after a while. And so, yeah. So now, if I, and again, I still have my key bindings, right? So now, so I can go from here to here to here without changing anything, right? I'm not, I haven't touched my blueprint. All I've done is gone into the editor, added a new uh, ability, and changed the behavior. Again, without without recompiling blueprints, without having to go into all that. I just told Abel, hey, Abel, here's how I want this ability to behave, and Abel takes care of the rest of it under the hood. So let's go ahead and we'll bring it up in multiplayer, because that was Pixel Forge's other question was, hey, how does this work in multiplayer? And you can see, I mean, you saw when I was in there setting things, the only thing I was concerned multiplayer-wise was, hey, I want this to only run on the server. I want this guy to run on the client and server. Uh, and then the rest of these I just set to client. I didn't have to make a bunch of replication fields. I didn't have to set all that up. Uh, Abel handles all that for me. So now I'm going to play. Let me see if I can find... So... You can see kind of down, down, you know, on the left side, you can see my guy, right? So if I set myself to my machine gun, look at that. You get the decals and everything, right? And if I change to my rocket, you know, I get my rocket launcher. So that's able in a nutshell, right, is a data-driven ability system written in a generic fashion, kind of with an eye towards performance. So I hope that helps. Uh, I've been getting a lot of really great questions and great feedback. Uh, I'd like to do another one of these. So if you have another uh, question or you, you know, you're curious, this, you know, you want to do an ability, but you're not sure kind of how, uh, please send me an email, uh, send me some, uh, or post in the thread on the, uh, Unreal forums, and you know maybe I'll pick it for the next video. So I'd like to continue doing these because uh, these these real world examples are great because it gives me a way to think of things I hadn't thought of before, and to then release that as free updates to you guys. So uh, I'm always looking to make Able better. I'm always looking to uh, make it more accessible for people who are you know kind of high tech and people who who are just kind of dipping their toes into game development for the first time. So thanks. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, and yeah, please let me know if you have any questions or comments. And yeah, see you guys next time. Thanks so much.